Um, this was taken on uh, Saturday, April the 2nd. And hopefully this will show up in here. Um, I'm doing a video of a video, so I don't know how great the quality is going to be. But uh, there was a video that was put out for the precursor clouds in um, uh, China before that uh, earthquake had happened. And this was on, again, it was on Saturday, and that was April the 2nd. And after listening to some of the things that uh, Scott, a.k.a. Bug, had put out about um, um, post-glacial um, rebound effect and... Jeez, that thing's bugging me. Post-glacial rebound effect and, and how sometimes, uh, just in terms of, like, these clouds, you'll get this, you know, the pressure happening down... 20, 30 k below the Earth's surface, and you know whether that creates some kind of geomagnetism or something, it can create this effect with certain clouds. Now, this cloud here was, like I say, it was. Hopefully, that'll show up. But it was just a little individual cloud. It looks like it's a piece of the other ones, but all those ones are actually quite far off in the background. And I was taking this between uh, shooting from North Vancouver looking out towards Vancouver Island and you've got you know blues and greens and yellows uh, pinks and orange in there again hopefully that's going to show up but in that one cloud in the center it was just one of those rainbow effect clouds its own small little individual cloud on its own and uh, yeah so anyways that was that that was like I say it was taken uh, right in between here I'm up here in North Vancouver, and that was looking out towards uh, Vancouver Island. I can see it from up here. And it would have been cloud probably somewhere just in this area here. So. All right, so let me just whip back to my uh, thing here. Again, lots of activity been happening for the Pacific Northwest. Um, one of the reasons that concerns me for that Cascadian subduction zone is you've got you know, the whole Cascade Mountain Range, which includes everything from uh, Baker and St. Helens, all those kind of things. So, um, of course, we'd looked at uh, uh, St. Helens, and that, that had actually had a bit of activity around. I don't know why that's zooming in so much, but... Um, this was for yesterday, April the 6th, and they'd had a couple of small quakes there. This is in the west. That was uh, St. Helens West. I don't know what they've what they've had today. Today they've had little tremors as well. Um, that's probably a one, 1 1.2. Uh, that might show up on that on that uh, 1.0 list that I showed you there. Um, I think Cedar and June were both also quite active uh, yesterday. Again, they're all sort of recording that one, and then just little rumblings. There's not a lot of magma flow happening underneath, it's just rumblings, but uh, a lot of them were just showing up. Uh, let's look at just rain, uh, Rainier. This is Camp Muir. Again, they all have this little rumblings. Um, the other day we were looking at uh, some of these, and Dutch had pulled up, and a lot of them just showed lots of magma. Again, it's activity, but not what I'm looking for. This is the husband, three sisters, not a lot of activity. I, it'll take me a sec to try and find one, but even that doesn't have it. Anyways, I, I like this. The one I prefer to look at is the interactive web recorders. If you click the interactive web recorders on the left-hand side sidebar they've got there, it brings you up to this one, and I find this one quite good. It'll it'll actually give you information all the way down into Northern Cal, which just also falls for where the, uh, I think it's, you know, Eureka or Fontana, somewhere around here where the uh, end of the Cascadian subduction zone ends. So for me, that's a, I quite like looking at this one, and it gives you the real-time seismograms. But what I noticed is a lot of the, I, Dutch put out some last week, and I went through every single one of these. And, you know, I was getting concerned because there's a lot that are around uh, volcanic areas and... Um, that you just you don't normally see that kind of activity that's that's there. If you click through these and you highlight them, you notice that it goes yellow. So at least you can see the area that you're looking at. And uh, this one here, it's just off of uh, Port Angeles. 
if I look at what's just going on in the last 24 hours. Oh. So this is what I was trying to show you on just that back page there is these are they're not really earthquakes up here these are just like rumblings of magma that's going underneath the, the harmonics I guess you'd say that you pick up these here though what you're seeing in the middle here are definitely little tremors and that is as well so that's interesting that was at uh, two o'clock and I think this is yeah universal time um, yeah especially the way it trails off um, nine two six. Let me take a peek for a couple of these. Nine two six is right on the island. And same thing. You're getting like these these flows happening here, where it's picking up all across the top there, a little more. But there's lots of these little static rumblings going through, and all of a sudden, bang! Yeah, we had another one there. That was the same one, that 2 o'clock one that was picked up across the water there as well. So both those had picked up uh, picked up something. Anyways, this is uh, running long. The one thing I wanted to, to show you real quick is just a quick little rundown about what the Cascadia Seduction Zone does, uh, how it interacts with the um, Pacific Plate and the um, North American Plate. And let me just show you that real quick. Um, this is the area I'm talking about. So you got North American Plate back here, which goes all the way down to Northern Cal. Um, it's the Juan de Fuca Plate is the one that you know has sort of the most concern at the moment. Uh, it's the 305th anniversary, so it's been you know since 1706, since the last uh, large earthquake, a nine something. The period, that, the the area outside of of the um, Vancouver Island and of Washington, Oregon and that, that's the locked area and there's a transition piece that goes underneath and those are the areas you know, where uh, the one of Fuca Plate is subducting underneath the North American Plate and this will give you a quick sort of a, an idea of what it is I was saying in that other Google uh, Earth that I was looking at you could see the little red lines well that's essentially where the Pacific Plate is pulling apart and the Juan de Fuca plate is the one that's seducting down underneath the North American plate. So even on this side of Vancouver Island, that's still North American plate. And again, that's subducting underneath. So in the subduction part, which is going underneath the continental crust, you get the melting happening. Of course, once that that um, starts to melt, I mean, the extra mantle or magma, it's got to go somewhere. And this is where we're getting rumblings right now. Uh, this area that they show here, that's what happened in the Great Quake of 1780. So uh, that was the one that created a, a massive tsunami and, and smoked Japan, and they didn't have an earthquake at that time. So along with those images, this gives you the same sort of an idea, just a different bit of a view, but it's that whole range of the Cascade Mountains, uh, which includes St. Helens and Baker and all that. And again, as this oceanic crust, which is part of the, the top layer, um, of the Juan de Fuca plate that's going underneath, that eventually melts when it hits that subcrust lithosphere, and uh, that magma eventually gets pushed up and out, and then you'll get a, you know, an issue with the dome blowing. Uh, there's another one that'll give you the same sort of an idea. So again, um, this this piece here, where it says number one, uh, that's your uh, continental crust, and it's it's the part that's relatively close to the surface of the North American plate two here is where you've got the uh, the deeper part of the subduction and that's of the Juan de Fuca plate which is going underneath here um, and that third which is where you get those tremblings that they feel for Vancouver Island and uh, all through Washington and the Olympic Peninsula and that sort of stuff that's the uh, the lock zone and essentially that's the just the boundary between the North American plate and that subducting Juan de Fuca plate so and again, this is the edge of the Cascadium subduction zone, and that's the parts that are splitting apart. I did a previous video, and it was uh, I showed you underwater in Google Earth, and it's actually the same same spot that they've mapped out. It's interesting. Okay, so aside from the computer glitches I'm having there, uh, I think that's uh, that's it. This will this will give you one little quick quick vid. Uh, just to, just to see that. Let me just close this one so it gets rid of some issues. But again, the um, the tremors, this is the 
what you would consider the edge of the North American plate and the Juan de Fuca plate going underneath, maybe Vancouver Island, probably this hop up here. And as this essentially starts to slip, it's going to finally kick out, and that's what's going to kick the water up. And once that uh, water goes up, it's going to, you know, uh, pull back down, and that's going to generate those massive waves. And that ripple effect that happens, those are the waves that will head out up to Alaska, across the water, and hit Japan, all the way down to Australia, because they'll travel all the way across the Pacific Ocean. And these waves here will also whip up, hit Alaska, hit the coast of uh, Vancouver Island, and travel all the way down Washington, Oregon, and down through uh, California. So hopefully we won't have one that does a big major slip, but uh, just with uh, all the recent activity, I just thought it'd be good to put something out. All right, folks, uh, that's it for me for now. And uh, yeah, stay safe.